Hey, welcome back to TMF Apparel USA. I hope you've seen some of my other videos. If you have not, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to give you some tips, tricks. We're going to talk t-shirts, business, all kinds of stuff, TV shows. This is one of my favorites here, Dexter New Blood. This video right here is about Knockout Black. Now, what is Knockout Black and why is it important is maybe what you're asking. Well, Knockout Black is for printing on direct-to-garment printers or direct-to-film printers. You have an image like this that has a big black background and honestly a decent amount of black in the image and if you're printing it on a black shirt you do not want to use black ink because it's going to provide this big black square around your design and then when you press it on the shirt or print it on the shirt you're going to have a big black area on the square now if you have a black shirt that's very unappealing if you were going to print this on a light colored shirt you probably still don't want all that black in there but you do have to use some so this is going to be for printing and use on black shirts. How do we get rid of it? Let's talk about two ways we can go about getting rid of the black in this particular image, saving it out as a PNG so you can print it and just apply it to dark garments. So the first way that people are probably used to is they go over here and they select their magic wand tool from the selection box. We can select an area that's black. Our tolerance, you're going to want to keep that set to a number where it's going to see most of this stuff around the outside, right? So right now it's at 10, and that's going to be the tolerance percentage of that color, plus or minus, that it's going to select. Let's just say we want to leave this tolerance here about maybe 15, and we have a pretty decent selection overall. If we want to clean that up a little bit, we can. Let's go up to 20, see where that's at. So that's a little closer to the R. We've got some stuff here, but we also have a bunch inside of this that we don't want to individually select. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Select, from the drop down menu we're going to scroll down here to similar we're going to click that and now it's going to select everything black that is this color black in the image now so we can do uh, all this in one video here let's go ahead and duplicate this layer we'll turn that one off and we're going to press delete all right and actually we want to make sure that is a rasterized layer delete boom there it goes now we still have some dark colors in here but they are not actually black colors as we zoom in here you can see they're really just bunch of dark reds and grays and so on and so forth. Um, now, here's one thing that I will specify for my particular printer using white rip. When I print with different environments, so white, color, dark, or black, the printer reacts differently. If I'm going to print this on a black garment in a black environment, it's not going to use any black ink. Now, that can be slightly problematic Problem for that is to create gray, we kind of need black. So what I have learned with my printer on the black environment setting is I don't really get a good gray unless I turn down the color percentages, which I'm trying to avoid. So I would print this one with a knockout black in this form in the dark environment because it's going to use black ink, but we're not going to have any black in our photo, right? This is what the actual printer is going to print. What, what we actually are going to see is we're going to put this on a black background and that's the result we're going to get. So for me, I like to print something like this. If I was going to DTF it with a gray tone, I would definitely print that on an environment that still uses black ink just so I could make this gray. Now, what are the downsides to doing this is we're going to have a hard edge. So if you have an image that doesn't have a hard edge on it, so on this particular image here, you would have a rough edge around these which may or may not make a difference in in the the graphic that i have with a fade on it i would print this with a direct garment printer normally and i would print this uh with a with a black on it just like it is but if you were going to remove it that is one simple way to get rid of all of the black that's in the photo now if we want to make sure that it is exactly black we want to make it uh more precise let's go over the second option for doing this which is going to be, I'm going to turn this layer off. We're just going to have this one on here. Let's rasterize this. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate it into a new layer, like so. And if you watch one of my other videos, this will make some sense to you because we're actually going to do a similar uh, task here. Oops, sorry about that. Let me grab this thing out and just drug it back in there on accident. And we're going to go over to, on the right-hand side of your layers, your channels palette here. We are going to click the menu, and down here you'll see split channels. It's, it's right there, a little cut off the screen. You're going to click that, and it's going to take that image and break it into uh, CMYK. Uh, 
me step back one sec second here. Kind of kind of fudge that up. Hold on, let me redo this because it will break it into CMYK, but we've got to turn it into CMYK first. So that's my bad. I got a little ahead of myself. We're going to duplicate the layer uh, just into a new one, just like I did. We're going to go to image mode, CMYK, click OK, then channels. Then we're going to uh, split the channels here on this one. And we're going to look for the one that says black. That's the one we want right there. Now, as you can see, this isn't really black. It's kind of a dark gray. So we want to go to image adjustments levels. And we can see that we have a lot in our histogram here where it's not even black yet in the image. We want to move this left toner over until we are in the black for sure. Then we're going to click OK. Then what we can do here is our mode is in grayscale. That is fine. We're going to go ahead and select. Uh, we could use the magic wand again, or we can go up here and just select, and we can go to color range, select the black, adjust the fuzziness of it, click OK, pull this one out like we did before. Let's go back to our regular image here. And what we want to do is make sure we're on the select tool. We're going to go over to the image that is selected. And now you can see we can drag it. If we click into the select box here, part of it, it's got a different arrow. We can drag this into this image. Now what we're going to do is just line it up. It's square, it's square. That's what we are looking for. We come back over to our layer and we hit the delete button. Boom, just like that. Now we have, for sure, a little bit different cutout, right? Let's look at them side by side. This one is very rough edged. This one has more of a fade to it because we went into that channel layer and adjusted it. So that's why we have a slight difference here between the two because one of them removed 100% of jet black and the other one is really removing a tolerance of black. That is the difference. So. Pick your poison. One of them is a little faster than the other marginally. They both get the job done. In my opinion, doing it this way is going to get the job done a little bit better. And uh, like I said, we put it on a black background and that is the outcome that we get, which is what you are looking for. So if you, uh, this video helped you in any way, shape or form, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and leave me some comments and let me know how you're doing. Maybe I can help you out with something else. If there's something else you need help with in Photoshop. And uh, check out the links below if you need some mock-up ideas. There's a link down there for Place It. If you need uh, some t-shirts, there's other videos there about uh, where to source t-shirts, how to list them, etc. So check those out, and I'll see you in the next video.